Securities offered through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through CWM, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, is under separate ownership from any other named entity. Carson Partners, a division of CWM, LLC, is a nationwide partnership of advisors. This is The Way to Wealth. With host Scott Ford, a jujitsu fighting, woodworking, beekeeping entrepreneur who is also the managing director, partner, and wealth advisor of Carson Wealth. Financial freedom is the goal, and clarity and simplicity is how we'll get there. Let's get to it. This is Way to Wealth. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Way to Wealth podcast, where we're all about making money simple so you can live life now focused on health, wealth, wisdom and happiness let's jump in with me is the bonnie belly bonnie's a certified financial planner with the team and is joining me today to talk about a piece of the way to wealth and specifically to talk about the way so bonnie wears a lot of hats she's been instrumental in helping build and update this way to wealth process so certainly she's intimately familiar and involved with it and she's also as i mentioned a certified financial planner so She knows this stuff. So with that, welcome to the Way to Wealth podcast, Bonnie. Thank you, Scott. Um, This is a lot of fun. So it's the first time I've ever recorded a podcast. So I'm going to enjoy this um, because I like to be a bit of a ham and in front of the camera. And just for all of you out there, I want you to know Scott has a real habit of stealing my thunder. So likely he's going to tell you something and then I'm going to tell you again. Boom. Thunder. (laughs) So I'll do my best. So on that note, one of the things I did want to ask is... um, I like to ask a question. I shared this on the first podcast, just early memories in childhood about money. Um, So I shared two. I shared, okay, it was a challenging memory, and then I shared a good memory. And not much prep for you on this. So I'm going to get to that question. I'm going to let that sit for just a couple minutes. Um, And we'll start with why, why this industry? What got you into wealth management and financial planning industry? Um, Well, it's going to kind of tie back to your first question, right? So my parents, they just didn't have an understanding of security. Like, what can you do with money? How do you protect it or how do you use it as a tool? So I wasn't raised with any money management skills. Um, And there were people in my life who had them. So I knew that there was, you could figure this out. And so it's always been kind of a puzzle. So when I went to college and started studying finance and math, I was very good at that, but you know, pretty much the career track for that is accountant. And I am absolutely not the person to sit in a cubicle all day by myself doing tax returns. Um, So I had to find a way to use those skills, but be able to work with people. And I walked into a meeting with um, a financial planning club on campus. And that was it, I was sold. Uh, Once I realized that I could take my skills in statistics and in investments and in finance and apply them to people and really affect their lives, that was, I was sold. Nice, nice. Did they have any parties or anything at the class? Oh yeah, in fact, what got me in the door was there was a sign on the door that said free pizza. (laughs) So, you know, you see that in college, that's it. You just go for it. It (laughs) Doesn't hurt. So I will ask then um, what what I'm, originally was going to ask, and that is just early childhood memories. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think, I have a belief that we're affected. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're affected by our upbringing. We all are. And that includes money. So we have these imprints. So I just think um, it's interesting to see and hear from different people and their experiences and specifically early memories of money so maybe a challenging memory of money and then maybe a a uh, not so challenging or a good memory of money i grew up really poor i mean i'm talking welfare food stamps um i remember a week when i was a kid where all we had in the kitchen to eat was oatmeal like that was it breakfast lunch and dinner every day oatmeal um that stuck with me so i never wanted to stay there I knew there was a way out, I just had to figure it out. So that's probably my most challenging memory about money was just not having it. And I think there's two ways you can go with that, right? You can become so hyper-focused on it that money becomes the most important thing in your life and it's the only thing that you're gonna do. Or you can say, there's a lot more to life and I can learn to love where I am right now and money is a tool for me to use. And I'm thankfully in that second camp, I found out that money is not the end all be all. I don't hyper-focus on it. 
I learned a lot of good lessons from my aunt. So uh, my mom's sister, to me, she always had everything figured out. She had a nice car and a nice house and she smelled good. And when you're a kid, like that's it, right? That's money you, if you smell good. So I thought she was rich and I wanted to learn from her. And she taught me some really good concepts around money. But I later learned in my 20s that she didn't have it all figured out either. She um, went through a very challenging time. Her husband had decided to retire early and he liquidated their investment accounts. He sold their home and he invested everything into a cattle ranch in Northern Arizona. Hmm. And you know, he was in his late 50s. So his expectation, he was gonna work another 20 years on the cattle ranch and make a lot of money off of it and they were gonna be fine. But he died very suddenly hmm. about a year after he purchased that ranch. And everything that he had invested, my aunt had to sacrifice because she had to short sell. She had to get out of the, the deal. And I, so she was left with just her retirement savings and it wasn't very much. So to me, that was a key that, all right, I got some good information, but there's a whole lot more to this puzzle that I don't understand. I need to learn. And so again, you know, when I'm in college and studying finance, that's what I'm trying to pick up is what is money? How do you use money? How do you accumulate wealth? Mm -hmm. And then what does it mean to be wealthy? Those were all questions that I had and I wanted to get answers for. Yeah. That's interesting. Thanks for sharing. And I'm going to add one to it. I didn't share this on the first podcast uh, that that you that you triggered or reminded me of. So I remember growing up, I was the youngest of five, and I mentioned my dad was a minister. So when he was in seminary um, for years preparing for that, um, mom took care of the kids, and I can I can remember being the youngest of five and being a kid. We would eat for days the the sausages and crackers, and I can remember mom saying, "I'm good. I'm not hungry." And you're thinking she's not hungry. And now I'm older going, oh my gosh, she didn't have, she didn't eat so we could eat. So the yeah. point is come from that background or coming from a very poor upbringing. Um, so we have that in common mm -hmm. and shout out to mom, you know, God bless you. Um, so with that, you know, when I think about this way to wealth, yeah, I also want to reiterate that's part of the curiosity that was struck in me with these childhood memories. Like, gosh, we, we lack freedom. That's clearly lacking freedom mm -hmm. um, because they didn't understand money. And it's not because they were ignorant. They were smart people, uh, great people. It's because it's freaking complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. And so this whole way to wealth process is me and the t and team mm -hmm. creating this what i like to call ideally a dream come true experience from a client perspective and i'm a client i use this exact process because i believe it's the right thing to do and by the way we'll never be done we'll always as long as we're involved and around and living be looking to say how can we make this more simple giving people more freedom so mm -hmm. that's the way to well so when we think about that the way to and wealth Today, I wanted to talk about the way. Mm -hmm. What's the way and the way to wealth mean to you? So the way is, I mean, in my understanding, it's kind of based on the Tao, which is an ancient Chinese philosophy around living now, being present in the moment, about being free and focusing on things that are really important to you. And that's not always your finances, right? That's a piece of it. That's a tool that you use. But the way is about being in the moment you're in with the people you're with and, and getting the most experience out of that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, enjoyment sometimes, challenges sometimes, but being able to focus where you are right now and soaking up as much as you can out of life. Yeah, yes, uh, that's it. And, and I'll, so I'll add, there's a video that I saw years ago that, that I think does a good job at yeah. expressing living now and it's from alan watts it's an alan watts video we'll put a link to that uh in this podcast um and so you can watch it it's like two minutes maybe two minutes and 30 seconds but he does <laughs> such a good job of explaining living now and i'll just give you a, a brief synopsis but it basically shows a kid in school mm -hmm. you know you're starting in school and then you're getting to middle school and man i can't wait till i get to high school and oh when i get to high school i'll probably go to college because then i'm going to be able to get a good career once i get this good career man i can make good money have a family and then i'm really going to be living and then he shows this person at 45 50 years old and goes wait a minute, who sold me this? Like, am I living? 
That's the point. It's like all along you were living, and that's the idea is really focusing on living now. So we'll put a link to that video. I think that does a great job really synthesizing what we're trying to say on living now. Yeah, I agree. I love that video. And I remember the first time I watched it, it was like something clicked for me that like, it is amazing how we spend so much of our lives working towards a destination. But there's only one destination in life. And I'm really honestly not excited to get there. So I'm going to take time and really enjoy the journey. And you hear people say that all the time. But that video helps you really understand that concept. Because it's true. You go to grade school, you're thinking, man, I can't wait from kindergarten. I'm going to start first grade. And when I get to first grade, everything's going to be cool. And then I'm going to go to second grade. And you're just building all the time to the next destination instead of stopping and really just taking everything you can today. Yeah. And one of my favorite books, I have several. I, I'm a big fan of Michael Singer. Uh, I'm actually a big mm -hmm. fan of uh, Dr. Uh, David Hawkins. And I'm a really big fan of Eckhart Tolle. And that book, The Power of Now, also does a good job synthesizing this because what if the destination we do have a destination we're not here forever and what if the destination is actually here like now that's the point this is the destination you're in it so that's where the power and the the peace and the overwhelming sense of well-being can be you already have that so anyway let's use money as a tool to get us there on that note mm -hmm. uh you mentioned going through school becoming a certified financial planner, which there's training and testing uh, pretty extensively involved in that. What are their thoughts on that? What do they teach uh, in regards to living now versus planning for the future? So, you know, I think the CFP board, their intention is to really make sure that professionals are taking into consideration their clients' needs, their clients' goals and objectives, so that planning is done based on what you're trying to get out of life. However, the training that you get from that is very technical in nature. So you, you're learning about you know, cash flow, you're learning about investment allocations, you're learning about insurance and pensions and how to use all of those things together. But what the piece that they, I think they miss is how to help your client understand what they're really trying to accomplish. Because I think sometimes you come in to a conversation and the client is saying, I am here because you're a financial professional, so I'm gonna tell you all about my money but that they don't tell you about their family dynamics and they don't talk to you about their dreams or anything that they think they'd like to achieve in life or the legacy that they wanna leave behind. And if you're missing those pieces, you really can't put together a solid financial plan for someone. So I think the intention of the CFP board is to help you get clear on what those goals and objectives are, but the training is still very academic. It's still very much a, this is how you reach the efficient frontier in a portfolio versus psychology. And this is how you help someone understand what is under underneath the iceberg is sometimes mm -hmm. how we talk about this. You know, if you think of an iceberg, you've got the tip above the water. That's generally the piece that people are willing to share with you. They're aware of this issue and they're willing to share that with you. Mm -hmm. Just below the surface of the water, you have the pieces that maybe they're aware of, but they're not willing to share for whatever reason. And even below that, they may have pieces that they're not aware of yet. And they need a space to kind of articulate, talk through it to get to the real root, the bottom 10% of what they're really trying to accomplish or what they're really concerned about. What I love about the Way to Wealth process is it gives us space to do that. We get to really take time to discover our clients, to really learn about them. We ask a lot of questions, but it's important to do that. And I think that's the piece I would love to take to the CFP board and say all financial planners, all professionals should learn how to do this. Yeah, and on that note, I mean, we're creating a workbook and the idea of the workbook, obviously for the team, it's also for um, the community and the world at large, like you wanna just take this and implement it on your on your own, wonderful. Here's how we do it. Like here's the workbook, here's the manual to do that. And here's the premise. This is, a, this is where this is coming from as well. There's three pretty big beliefs that we have and uh, the why to way to wealth. And one of them is, uh, yes, there's the CFP board, which is wonderful, it does a good job. And we have lots of CFPs on the team. And I'm a believer that there's still lacking education to the general public where are you really taught finances mm -hmm. and education really on finances i don't think it's out there at least not at a level that i would like to see it or want to see it or at least not how my mind works because i'm a simplifier like okay give me this academic book what's the bottom line break this down for something that's meaningful to me so that's what this is about because we believe there's a lack of education two we believe there's a lack of teamwork 
like you have all these silos, it's whether it's a tax attorney or an estate planning attorney and a CPA and an insurance person, an investment person, a banking person, all these different people, and they're working by themselves. Now you are stuck collaborating and putting this right. web together, which is why people like my folks and your parents and people struggle because it's complicated. So not enough education, not enough teamwork. And then third, and I bet you've experienced this in a lot of aspects of life and in finances, and that is there's way too much advice given without a thorough understanding of the complete agenda, which is exactly what you were talking mm -hmm. about with the iceberg. Like, what are you really after here? And there, sometimes people don't know what they don't know. So getting clear on really what you're after, and there's all kinds of tools out there. We'll, we'll probably link to some here on what's the real agenda. And we also can link to the, the Eckhart Tolle book, I meant at The Power of Living Now. So anyway, that's additional three pieces of the why behind Way to Wealth. Why now? Why is this needed? Because of those three things I mentioned, as well as others I've mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So one thing I, I, wanted, I wanna talk about is thinking of Thomas Jefferson, and this is going back in time, but I think it's applicable to living now. And you know, he had his, the, the, the dec declaration and his piece of what he wrote, and I'm just gonna say the ending of it without sharing the entire bit, and that is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I have some thoughts on that, but I just wanted to see, when you hear that, what do you think? Well, so obviously he's talking about the freedoms that you know every American, every human being deserves, right? And life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, obviously, live the way you want to, have the things in your around you that are comforting, that are meaningful, that bring you value. Uh, liberty, freedom, and freedom means a lot to a, a lot of different people. For me, I want the freedom to use my time how I feel I want to give it, right? That's the most valuable asset I ever have in my entire life is time. So if I'm doing something, I wanna throw myself 100% into it. I wanna let my passion drive it. That to me is liberty. And then the pursuit of happiness. This one is an interesting one because I feel happiness is a choice. You know, you really make a decision every day that I'm going to you know, enjoy everything that comes at me today or not. And to me, that's the pursuit of happiness. But it's, it's not something that you can just attain without having tools around you to make it happen. So you, know, you can't just go out there and, and decide I'm gonna be happy, but I have no food. I don't have these basics. I mean, if you go back to the hierarchy of needs, the very first one is you need food and shelter. Mm -hmm. So you have to solve for some of those before you can get to the top of the pyramid where you're able to actually live a truly fulfilled life. And I know that's a big concept for you is like living fully now, being truly fulfilled. To me, that's the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, yeah, and so I've heard this Dan Sullivan actually mentioned, mentioned this. I've mentioned strategic coach before. Um, I'm, I'm back in with Dan Sullivan, great uh, person, great program. And what I'll say is, his comment is the pursuit pursuit of happiness. Like that's he missed it there, talking about Thomas Jefferson. And I agree with that. If you define pursuit how we define pursuit today, because if you're pursuing it, then you're you're not there. You're, it, which means it's going to be like chasing the horizon. I'm pursuing the horizon. Well, guess what? I don't care how fast and far you go. It's a moving target. You're pursuing it where you can just be it. So I did some research on this and I heard a guy and I can't remember his name and I, and I can't cite the, the actual uh, paper that I read, but he defined pursuit back in those days when the declaration was written and it meant practice. And I'm like, ah, well, if it means practice, that's very different than pursuit. But I think most people are really pursuing happiness. One day, I'm gonna retire, I'm gonna have this big pile of money. No, no, it's practicing happiness. So when we look at health, wealth, wisdom, and happiness, and you think of happiness as healthy relationships, a dream that you're contributing to, and things that you're grateful for, you can be happy today working on those three things versus pursuing it. So I really like the definition of Back then, it meant practicing happiness. I love that. I think that is so applicable because 
it, it you're right when we chase something and that's essentially what you're talking about pursuing it to us in a modern definition is chasing something we're following it we're trying to get there that's very different from waking up in the morning with a grateful heart thinking through what are you really happy about today how are you going to soak up happiness out of your relationships out of your events everything you're doing that's a choice that you make in the morning so i love the idea of practicing happiness every day because it does take practice Mm -hmm. because no matter how positive you are you have those bad hair days where you just wake up and, and you're being challenged. Everything's coming at you. It's not working the way you want to. Your personal um, emotions are going to step in and, and decide that you don't like this. This is not cool. So, you know, it's a challenge at those moments to say, you know what, I understand. I don't really care for what's going on right now. I'm not going to let it affect my whole day. It is what it is. And I'm just going to get through it. I'm just going to face that and be done and let yeah. that energy go. That is that takes practice. Yeah, for sure. It makes me think of Michael Singer, and I know you've you've heard me oh, talk yeah. about this. I actually uh, visited there uh, last year, right before the pandemic, January 2020, uh, was there and able to meet him and hear him speak. And he's got two really good books. He's got multiple books. I've, I've actually have read them all, uh, but the, the two latest are The Surrender Experiment and The Untethered Soul. And really, The Surrender Experiment is just kind of like living now. It's like you're just accepting what is and embracing what's being brought and being good with that. You're interacting with things. And so anyway, I think that's that's um, interesting stuff. And you talked about a little bit of having a routine and practicing it. And so for me, like I have a morning routine. I do the same ritual every single morning. Um, and I do that because it gets my head space right. It gets my health right. Because um, you don't know what's going to be brought that day, but that practice. And by the way, I end it in my meditation every day, thinking of health, wealth, wisdom, and happiness. And then when I get to the end, I'm thinking of three people or things that I'm grateful for that day. That's practicing happiness. So that's my style or definition or the way I do it. And the other thing I'll add to the happiness piece is I mentioned a dream that you're contributing to, that's what this is. This is my dream, is how can we make money simple based the whole way back to childhood as I share my story. It started there. It's not ending probably until I check out to the next horizon of making money simple. And I'm contrib- this is my thing, so that's why the podcast. So I'm very passionate about making money simple. We'll continue to do this to bring value so that you can live a life more fully. On that note, any final thoughts or um, observations from you? Um, thank you for having me. I mean, this is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it, uh, and I'm happy to come back anytime. I think that we talked about a lot of really heavy, deep stuff. Um, I do want to mention a quote because this is something that I also feel is really um, important in what we're trying to accomplish, in particular with your workbook, right? So Buckminster Fuller has a quote out there that says, you cannot change the way a man thinks, but you can give him a tool which will help him change the way he thinks. And I probably did not quote that 100%. But the point is, that's what we're trying to do is develop tools to help you change the way that you think about money there's so many good people out there who just don't understand it and you're right we don't have that education for it so this is something that i think is important and needed yeah yeah thank you and so you're going to meet uh, the entire team you've met bonnie today you'll uh, through this it's i'm going to be having a team member or another guest on as we go through this uh, you'll you'll learn quickly that i'm the weakest link on this team that's by design everyone else is much smarter which is good so look at the end of the day we're going to continue striving and sharing how to make money simple so you can focus on living now regarding health wealth wisdom and happiness The opinions voiced in Way to Wealth with Scott Ford, Managing Director, Partner, and Wealth Advisor of Carson Wealth, are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial, or tax advisor prior to investing. Guests on Way to Wealth are not affiliated with CWM LLC or Satara Advisor Networks LLC. Carson Wealth, 19833, Leitersburg Pike, Suite 1, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21742.